Nice. Good evening. Welcome to Two Local Radio. This is Ray Ray. And this is Chrissy D. And this is Tempo with a T. And this is Snow. Wow, Snow actually said something louder. You could hear her today. She was stretching. <laughs> well, as everybody can see, uh, we've got a bit of a reunion going on here. Um, you know, Tempo and Snow have been off the show for a little while. They had to handle their own business. And uh, Chrissy D said, hey, I'm going to come back for a show. Sure did. So tonight I'm going to let Mr. Tempo start it off. You said that right when I was taking it like. An inhale of my cigarette when I lit it and smoke went my eye. <clears throat> Anyways, um, first of all, I want to say today was a very productive day, very good day, very nice weather. wasn't too hot, wasn't too cold. No rain. That's always good, right? Um, so we went up, did a little uh, little photo shoot there. That was pretty cool. Um, I think uh, for the price, I mean, it was it was pretty good, pretty good deal. Uh, we were just got done viewing the the photos there, and uh, I'm not gonna lie, I wouldn't I wouldn't expect them to be uh, so professional. Uh, it, was, it was very good. Um, I believe it was rainy photography. That is exactly what it is. And she's located out uh, right in Sevierville. Right in Sevierville, that is correct. And very affordable prices. Very affordable, and I actually got a card in my pocket, but. Uh, I didn't get her permission to to release her email or anything like that, so I can't I can't do that for you all right now. Uh, but uh, after this show, uh, we'll get a hold of her, and she doesn't mind. Uh, we'll, we will release that, and uh, you can check her out. She's really really good. And the reason we're doing uh you know we were doing photos is because we've got something great coming up. Uh, I'm not really gonna release the information right now. I'm just gonna say that uh. Y- the pictures are very necessary. Tempo's trying out for uh, the professional male cheerleading naked wrestling a bear <laughs> squad. <clears throat> That's why we were in the mountains. It was, it was real fun. He even actually wrestled a few deers. <laughs> right in the mic. That was good. <laughs> Still echoing <laughs> through my headphones. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> but the thing about it is we were going, you know, going there, and we had to go around a curve, around a curve of a car. And I'm like, I don't know if my car is going to be able to handle it. Those are some pretty, uh, pretty, uh, w- yeah, wicked, wicked curves. Um you know, the, and that's what I was getting at there. Is, is there was one that was that was really, really, really steep, and it was a sharp turn. Like uh, if you were on a bike, you probably would have laid it down. Oh yeah, um, definitely. You would have tore yourself up. The guardrail had done been wrecked into. But uh, we, anyways, we we managed to make it through there. Um, got up to the top of the mountain, and. Uh, Took the photo shoot. It's a pretty good deal. Um, I don't think I could live on that mountain. Uh, me and Snow were talking about that. I, I couldn't live on that mountain. Maybe in the holler down there, but not on that mountain. And and, and what's funny is uh, we we were talking too. Me and uh, Chrissy D. We were talking, and I'm I'm like, well, if shit ever broke loose, though, that would be the safest place to be is up on a mountain. Yeah, but not with a black top driveway. Because <laughs> that's not natural. <laughs> um, but uh, that's true too. Snow said we'd get a lot more winds on top of the mountain. You know, you know when we as as we were following her because we all took our own cars or whatever. But uh, we were following her after we met her at the gas station, and she took us to um, she took us on the, on the wrong turn at first, right? And we went up. Did did y'all happen to notice? What the the house on the right? You know where she pulled in, y'all pulled in. Did y'all notice the house on the right there? Yeah, we yeah. Do you notice what was in their front yard? No. Two fifty-five gallon drums, a thousand gallon tote, 
and a steel. I shit you not. Oh, shit. <laughs> That's why it took me a while to come back down. <laughs> yeah. There was a steel. I was like, no way. <laughs> really? In the open like this? <laughs> yeah, he was, he was kind of curious, wasn't he? Just standing out there like, who are these fuckers? <laughs> yeah, I think we were on private property, so... <laughs> Hey, we didn't get shot at, so. Well, nobody uh, shot at us today. We'll, we'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, well, they're going to have to come find me tomorrow. The thing is, is, uh, you know, it's, it's very nice up here. It is. I, I enjoyed myself. Uh, got a little little sunburn. But, yeah, she said the grass wasn't very green. Yeah. But it's still pretty. The trees were green. Uh, it's still in here, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, no. Um, but after that, you know, we went and we did a, a little dining, if you will. And Tippo's talked about this before. And I don't, you know, mean to sound like a broken record. But uh, how fucking hard is it to get a burger, bacon, cheese, and pickles only? That's three fucking things. Besides the meat. And the two buns. <laughs> and I mean, I was sitting in the car after we left the place, right? We left the place. And I'm sitting in the car and I'm like, the, what kind of test do they give these people? Like, when you get hired, I'm sure you have to do some type of like basic math. You have to do math. Okay, you have to, yeah, you have to do something, right? So, maybe they need to start doing like shapes, colors. This is egg. This is bacon. This is sausage. That way they don't fuck everything else up. <laughs> what What's crazy, though, you know, we were eating with them and whatnot. And why is it that when the waiter or the waitress fucks up, that they totally ignore the person that they fucked up with? <laughs> Pretty funny, right? It's exactly what you did to me. Exactly. Snow, she finished her drink. Mine, I didn't have... I mean, maybe three ounces in the, in, the, in the beer, maybe. And it's not in a bottle, so she can definitely see it. She looks at me, looks at my glass, looks at Snow, and asks Snow, Snow, do you, oh, she said, do you, would you like another drink? Snow's like, no, I'm all right, thank you. Looks at me, and then walks away. First of all, you fuck my fucking order up, okay? You, and then I, I didn't eat, I didn't want it. Top it all off before, you know, I told him, you know, just take it off the ticket. I'm fine. I'll, I'll be all right. Is she thought I said just put a new bun on it. If you put a new bun on it, it's got mayonnaise on it. Guess what that bun's going to have on it now? Mayonnaise. <laughs> <laughs> Very true. God. Jeez. Oh, whatever. Yeah, I bet it is. She's, yeah, she, her special mayonnaise. I, I, know, I know how you feel because I'm the same way with mustard. And the thing is, I mean, I, I don't, I, I, it's, it's fucking hard. I, I know it is. It's, it's just, it's hard. It's very hard. Pickles, cheese, and bacon. That's a lot to ask for. That's a lot. It's kind of like, hey, uh, when you go take a piss, unzip your pants, flip your wang out. And pee on the wall. Piss. On the wall. Put your wang back in. Don't Zip it. And Pretty sn- fucking hard, I know. And Snow said, don't forget to shake. Yeah, you got to shake it a couple times, but... Shake three times, three. More than three. You are bad. No, you don't. But no, that's... <laughs> that's that that's on the air. Do that. <laughs> I said, sometimes I wish you did, then I could just whip it out and pee wherever. <laughs> She'd be pissing on the walls. Anyhow, um, Ray, you want to start up a topic? I like that topic. <laughs> Pissing on the wall? <laughs> Why not? <laughs> I pissed in a bird fountain. No, he he pissed in my flower pot, and it grew it it grew clovers. He pissed clovers. I'm Irish. It's a true story too. <laughs> oh, there you go. <laughs> Yeah, we were coming back from the bar, and I really, really had to go really bad. 
No, it was like one of those, like, it's about to start sprinkling by itself, whether I want to do it or not, kind of go. So, I went. Not them sprinkles. Yeah. The ones that leave you wet. No. Um, but no, I, I, like I was saying, I, I'm pretty satisfied with that photographer. I should have asked her if it was all right if we released her email and everything. I'm sure she wouldn't mind, but we still have to get that permission before we release any of that on the air. Yeah, we always have to get permission. All right, but before uh, you know, we come up with topics because we like to wing shit, um, I do want to say that I appreciate you know, uh, the bands that we've you know, had lately and the fact that, you know, we're having more bands and last night's show with Juke Joint Drifter or Drifters, you know, that's a, it's a tongue twister if you think it about is. it. It is, and I like their logo. Did you see that on the page? Yeah, exactly. At first I thought it was just a steer, but if you really look at it, no, it's a guitar neck, like a <laughs> guitar head, and hey. it's got, it looks like a steer. That was awesome. Clever idea. But yeah, they, they were, uh, you know, a pleasure and whatnot, and tomorrow we have uh, Mike Flows. He actually uh, won a showcase in New York City a while back, and he actually got a record deal and then it fell through isn't that funny how that shit happened we were talking about this too isn't that funny it's 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 not funny but it's funny how when you go and bust your balls for something and then when they guarantee something that always falls through like that that chance of you not falling through is is like winning the lottery He did get screwed too, didn't he? What song are we going to listen to? All right. Well, we're going to listen to Say Yeah, and it's by JJD, or the Juke Joint Drifters, uh, from last night. And then later, we're going to listen to uh, Mike Flows because he is, you know, our special interview tomorrow night at uh, 1010. We've changed the time to 1010 rather than... 11 due to, you know, schedule conflicts. Sounds good. All right, but this is Say Yeah by JJD or Juke Joint Drifters. And I hope everyone enjoys. They're a Knoxville blues rock band.
got something to talk about. Say, yeah, 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 yeah. You're listening to True Local Radio. Yeah. Oh, yeah. All right. Once again, that is a jo- Juke Joint Drifters, a blues band out of Knoxville, Tennessee. What uh, What's crazy about them, though, is they all work normal jobs. One does uh, concrete. Uh, another is actually, you know, the owner of um, Copeland's out in Kingston. It's a restaurant, isn't it? Correct. If I'm not mistaken, it's a barbecue okay. restaurant. Yeah. But what I want to talk about right now is how technology has evolved. Because as I'm listening, you know, to different interviews and different reactions from bands, they're all wondering why it seems like the fan base is not in tune like it was back in the day. Okay, I'm following you. I'm following you. And... What it is is because technology has advanced so much, and it doesn't matter what sign you have at the door. You could say, you know, no cell phones, no video cameras, no this, no that. People are still going to find ways to, you know, do what they want to do. In all reality, uh, if if I was to go to a show and they said that I was not allowed to have my cell phone and they were being very blunt about it, like searching people, I would not go to the show. I would turn around. Exactly. But in this day and age, with the tablets, with the cell phones, with the, you know, the ability to text and check your, uh, you know, fantasy sports and everything else, it's not that, you know, people aren't listening anymore. It's just that they we've just grown to a new age where people are able to multitask. Yeah, it is. And that's exactly what it is. It's multitasking, right? I mean, look at look at people that are doing the unfortunate texting and driving. Um, I mean, it's it's just, it's it's weird how over the last 15 years, uh, our bodies and mind has, has been able to adapt to so much that's changed. Uh, yeah, evolve. There you go. That's a better word. Evolve. Uh, it, it's it's impressive, but at the same time, it's it's kind of scary. said, hell, you got five-year-olds with, with iPhones now. Yeah. And we definitely, in the future, are going to invest in uh, more microphones so everybody can speak. That's coming out of Tempo's next check. So, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll have things uh, more legit. More legit. Considering uh, the quiet snow all of a sudden wants to talk. It's always good. I told you it would happen. It's always good. You know, um, the whole thing, though, it, it, it's just crazy because people can, like, do so many things now at once. And I, I agree. If I was told at a place, hey, you can't have your cell phone, I'd be like, well, then what the fuck? I can't text nobody. Well, well I mean, yeah, but then again, I mean, there's a reason people have cell phones, right? So, you still have it though. Hold on one minute. It's like whenever you're in like high school or whatever, you're not you're not supposed to have your phones in school. Hell, whenever I was in high school, I just kind of said fuck it and brought mine anyways. Told them it's for emergencies. They didn't need to know what those emergencies were. <laughs> the way I put it. Well, actually, my um, not that long ago, my niece had gotten uh, she was in school and uh, she had her cell phone. Actually, no, the first time it happened was a while ago, and um, she was having a problem in school and uh, she wanted to call her mother and they wouldn't let her. 
So, and they said, oh, we'll take care of it. We'll take care of it. They, she didn't trust them because they didn't do what they were supposed to at the school. So, you know what? She called her mother on the cell phone. And then another time, yep, and then another time, this girl came up and I don't know, they were, she started some shit with my niece again. And uh, she bit my niece. When my niece actually just said, you know what? Fuck it. I'm not even going to call the, um, that's what the first one was. The girl had bit her and, um, they, they didn't do anything about it. They weren't going to let her call her mother or nothing. So she actually called her mother. I, no, she didn't even call her mother. She took a picture of it and sent it to her mother on her, on her cell phone, from her cell phone. And then another time she was sick and, uh, they wouldn't let her go to the nurse or nothing. She had an re- allergic reaction to some makeup and, uh, she was having trouble breathing and everything, and they wouldn't let her call her mother. She texted her mother and call, and told her what was going on. Let me tell you something. My sister had her ass down that school in two seconds flat, and I would have told that principal off till no end if I was her. I don't, I, they probably did. The, the thing is, I, I blame, you know, uh, how do I explain it? If you can't have your cell phone when you go someplace, I, I think it's wrong. And the reason it's wrong is because you eliminated the pay phones. They're nowhere. Well, God forbid if there's an emergency. Exactly. And God forbid, what if there is an emergency? What, what it, if our kid's in school and God forbid he gets sick or hurt or needs us and the school ain't doing shit for him? I'd rather him pick up his own damn cell phone and call us or text us and let us know something's wrong like my niece does than to be waiting on that school. But they don't do shit about nothing. As we're talking about in clubs. But but it, it all it all relates to it all, it all relates to, you know, having a cell phone right now is critical. What yeah. If, what if you break down in the middle of the highway? You know, there's a study that says um, and this has been put out a couple of years ago. I'm sure <clears throat> the distance is a lot shorter than uh, this one. But um the study was is uh, there's one object that is always within five feet of you, and um, you know the radio show is having people call in and see if they knew what it was, and uh, sure enough, it took fifteen, sixteen people. Finally, someone said cell phone, but that's that's the topic. Uh, you know, cell phones they're within five feet of you, and this was like I say five years ago. Now, in all reality, I'd say within three feet of you, you got your cell phone well, at all times. You have to. You really have to. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, but I mean, then again, you know, it's like a lot of time, and, and I'm, I'm I'm known for this. My family knows this. Um, like my voicemail, it's full. It'll stay full because I have family members that like to call and leave the same message six times a day. Um, another thing, I like to leave my phone on vibrate, uh, that way I can, I can sleep if I, if it's two o'clock in the morning, you know, yeah, I'll feel bad if something actually happened, but, uh, when I wake up, I'll get it, right? But, and I do too, and, and the thing is, is, I mean, it's not, yeah, I, I guess everyone has their own preference, right? You have your preference on how you want your cell phone. I mean, hell, it's your, it's your damn cell phone anyways, so... Yeah, they, they, they charge you up the ass, like, without uh, the Vaseline. You're getting yeah. fucked. Rough. On the bill. Yeah, rough. But, yeah, it, it's crazy because pay phones are far and few between. There are some out here. I've seen, like, two. They're red now. I would say, yeah, you're probably right, too. <laughs> and Snow's red. mentioned they're red. They're not blue anymore. Really? Wow. Huh. I tell you what. Wow. He's on the phone. So, but, yeah. Um, yeah, they, I, I don't know. Um, it's bizarre. Uh, Red. Ma. <laughs> <laughs> Her name is Ma. No. Um. Yeah. No, uh, another topic is, uh, why people can't fucking get an order, right? I can go on that one for like five years straight. But. 
Yeah, that's aggravating when somebody can't get a damn water right. But uh, we're we're gonna because uh, we've already touched base on that order thing. Yeah, I know. Uh, I, what I want to talk about is the thing that's going on in Seattle right now. And what's that? Fifteen dollars an hour has passed for hospitality and transportation. And this is in Seattle. In Seattle, Washington. So those that are working, uh, you know, minimum wage fast food jobs, okay, will be able to get paid fifteen dollars an hour. Okay. The problem I have with it, what about the people that went to like trade schools and busted their ass and everything and they don't make fifteen dollars an hour? Yeah, and this fair. is strictly for hospitality and transportation? Yeah. Hospitality and transportation. Not just general. Not just general. That is kinda of fucked up. Well, I, I mean I mean I mean, even if they did it general though, look how many jobs people would lose. Like the like the little businesses would just go under. Uh, I don't think they would, I don't, uh, I'm sure some would, um, but in all reality, if you, if you, and I've, I've talked to Snow about this several times and I've, I've had discussions at work and, and, uh, at the bar. Um, the thing is, is if minimum wage goes up anywhere, it doesn't matter if it's in just a town or if it's in only California or here in Tennessee, we'll say Knoxville, it goes up to 15 as well. And you can say just Knoxville, we could say the U.S. in general, 15 flat. The McDonald's dollar menu will be the McDonald's 250 menu. Okay, so, and, and before, I mean, we we're talking about the mom and pop shops, and I'm talking about a national chain. I mean, billion dollar company, right? But... The thing is, is, is the people that are working for these chains, okay, the fast food or uh, Kmart, Target, Walmart, Home Depot, Lowe's, the movie theater, Crystals, wherever you, I mean, wherever we're, you know, going to bring up that's making minimum wage, the price of the product is going to go up, and I'm going to tell you why. Even though it's a multi-million or multi-billion dollar corporation, they do not want to give up. Two or three million dollars a year. That's a lot of money. They don't want to give up one dollar a year. They don't. No, they do not. So, and another thing that I was talking to Snow about is <clears throat> there's no limit. And and I mean I'm I'm kind of glad there's no limit because I mean if I was a successful business owner and I franchised and and it just kind of took off, uh, I wouldn't want. You know, a limit set on how much I can make a year because that's pretty much shutting me down as far as my freedom and, and my hope of, of, of a bigger dream, right? In a sense, but if there was a way, and and this is this is going to be asinine because I'm crossing crossing the fence on both of these, but if there was a way to try to keep product down price, but raise minimum wage. So if you can meet in the middle, instead of the dollar menu, you're at the dollar seventy-five two dollar menu versus the two fifty menu. That's when the minimum wage would actually benefit the people that are making the minimum fifteen dollar wage. But 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 here's here's the deal, okay? You you're not making any more. It's an illusion to think that you are, and the reason for it is because of the new you know health care law. These businesses have to have you know so you have to have insurance okay so now you're you're making 15 dollars an hour so now if you work two jobs now you're bum, bumped up to the next tax bracket pretty much so you're you're paying up the ass for taxes right and plus you got to pay medical so really okay you're making 15 dollars an hour but you're not you're making nine change you know what i thought um I was thinking of this, is how much is it you get fined if you don't have that insurance? Does anyone know? I think it's like, first year is like $250, I think. Depends on, I think first, yeah. first year, okay, and then we'll go to the second year. Like, I was look, I was on that website, I was looking at it, and it's like, there's some that are, it's like $120 a month, but that's like, if you got shot and you go to the ER... You know, you use it like once, but 
it, and it's kind of screwy. If you look at that website, they, you can you can pay this gold package, but then there's like a gold level two, a gold level three, a gold level four, and these are all these perks, right? It's sil- what is it? Gold, silver, and platinum, if I'm not mistaken, is the three different levels. Yeah, and, and, and here's the thing. Why in this country, you, you know, that many, you know, soldiers have, you know, died for, and, you know, many people, you know, claim is the best country in the world, and, you know, that's that's fine. But why is in this one is the universal health care not universal? But in other countries, it is. Talking about like Canada? I, I'm talking about, um, I'm just talking about here, if you have more money, you're still treated better, even with the new health care law. In other countries, you're basically on an even playing field from what I've heard from my friends in other countries. Do I know that's a fact? No. This is uh, <clears throat> this is what I've I've noticed. Um, it really depends what hospital you go to. Uh, another thing, it really depends on what doctors are working. Uh, I've had to take snow to the hospital before, and we've literally sat there in the ER for eight hours, and there were six people. Six people. So like appendicitis, right? Yeah. Eight hours, six people. It's like, <laughs> I think we should go. And the thing is, is, I was like, I think we should, you know, possibly go to another one. And she's like, okay, well, let's do that. And in the back of my head, I'm like, well, we could be called as soon as we walk out that door. So if you think about it, it's kind of like gambling. Exactly. I, I'll tell you, I'll tell you a fucked up story. I was having, uh, you know, chest pains, and you know, this was a long time ago. I was having chest pains, and I was, uh, you know, rushed to the ER via ambulance. Okay. I got in the ER, and they decided to put me in the waiting room. Well, that was uh, an expensive taxi ride. <laughs> exactly. Wow. But, yeah, there's some hospitals that just don't give a fuck. I thought the whole idea of the ambulance was kind of to expedite that, that waiting. I thought that's what it was. Yeah. I thought that's what it was. Like... So I guess if you go out and you get in a wreck out here on Alcoa Highway, if you're not bleeding too bad, we're gonna put you in the waiting room with a like a towel. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. See, I don't know. Uh, it, it it depends. It depends on what hospital, and it depends on the doctors. But the bottom line is, if you pay the more money because you're rich and you could afford it, you get better care than somebody that doesn't. That is not equal across the field, uh, playing field. It's not even close. Have you seen the movie Bucket List? No, I have not. I'm going to let you borrow it. Because exactly what you're talking about right now is in that movie. The Bucket <laughs> List. Sorry, it's off topic. But, I mean, not really. It's the same thing. For the for everyone listening out there, if you've seen it, you, you know exactly what I'm r- relating to. When they meet up in the, the same room there, and then one gets a little more than the other. And Anyways, I'm not going to spoil it. Well, I mean, if it's not in the theaters right now, it's not really spoiling it. No, no, but I mean, you haven't seen it, so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I, I, under, I understand what you're saying. But, uh, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go back to the topic of the $15 an hour, and I'm going to say, okay, if you were to make $15 an hour all across the board in every state, even if they raised, you know, the minimum wage all the way there, here's the deal. The cost of living in every state isn't the same. No, it's not. That's why in California, I know minimum wage is more than here. I know it is. It, it is. In, in Connecticut, in Virginia, it's more than it's here. More. So, I guess uh, it, if an individual has a choice on where they choose to live, depending upon their job, their income, you may want to go to a Beverly Hills or you may want to go, you know, just south of Knoxville, Tennessee. I mean, that's up to you. I mean, you can go out to Kingston. Like, prime example, take Kingston and Oak Ridge. They're right beside each other. Pack of cigarettes in Oak Ridge. It's not double, but you're going to pay a buck more at least. Buck, buck fifty more. 
And that same pack of cigarettes, if you go up north, is an additional $7. Yeah, yeah, Pennsylvania was bad. I, and the thing is, oh, man, Sonoma? I believe that's what it was. Sonoma, Sonoma. Um, I think. That was the brand, I think. The cigarettes we, you know, get out here time for, like, under $3. Sonoma, I'm trying to think. I'm sorry, what? The yeah, the time brand. the times we get for like two seventy five out here a pack. Yeah. In Connecticut, the same cigarette at the cheapest place is running you six dollars and fifty cents for the exact same pack. There's nothing different except for one state wants to charge an arm and a leg and another doesn't. Yeah, well, I guess it's all based on what the state wants to do. Yeah. I, I don't know. I, the thing is, is you're talking about the whole minimum wage. Um, I'm I'm glad I don't have to make the choice whether it passes or not. Um, it's already passed. Right, right. But I'm saying for 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 the whole country. Okay. I mean, because that, if you look at it, I mean, it, the, the that that would be terrible. That would. Be, I mean, what what happened? Let, let's go back to the health care. What happened when? You low when you made the healthcare law. You know what companies did instead of you know wanting to pay, you know, uh, you know, up to in you know, you know, having you know different healthcare plans and everything. What they do, they cut the hours and made people part time. And I did I not tell you that, Snow? Did I not tell you that's what they would do? They made people part time so they don't have to. You know, pay uh, pay the employee, and the employee is still responsible on their own accord to pay for medical expense. Let me uh, go back here for just a second. Um, the idea of business, to me, uh, I, I enjoy just the idea of, of, of business as far as the expenses and your, your outcome, how much you're going to try to project to make, how much you can try to project as far as costs. Um, but I'm going to, I'm going to tell you something when, when these, these companies did this and they, they, they put everyone from full to part time or, uh, from 40, they started working them 39, 39 hours. So they're not considered full time or, or made them individual contractors or made them individual contractors. Well, there's nothing but, wrong with that. No, there's not. But this is, this is something to, to think about. Okay. If, if you're one of these greedy companies. Okay, and we've talked about them before. If you're one of these greedy companies, and you set out, okay, I'm going to spend twenty thousand a month in employee, employee check, employee income. All right, and we'll say I have twenty employees. Twenty employees, twenty thousand dollars a month. Okay, that's what I'm going to pay. Now, if by law I work on forty hours a week. I have to offer insurance, right? Correct. Or even 35. 35. Okay. We'll bump them down. Well, I'm going to cut them to 20 hours and I'm going to hire 20 more people. I've still got the same amount of money going out. I have 20 people working for me originally. The law came out. I cut them down to 20 hours a week. I'm going to get that other 20 hours out of 20 more people I hire. And I'm going to use a temp service in order to do so. You do that. <clears throat> well, even if you didn't do that. But if you do do that, you very well may be paying more if you go to a temp service. But the fact that I can cut I can cut my cost by 0%. I'm still going to be paying the same thing. Not to cut you off, but you really wouldn't be paying more just because of the medical law. No. No, you're not. Because but, the, you're gonna, but you're going to be forced to offer. Right. Yeah. And well, I know, I know, a very large company that everyone knows that offers it to their employees, but it's literally half a month's wage. You can't do that. That's that's wrong. You can't do that. You, you, you. Yeah, it does start with a W. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. Starts with a W. <laughs> yeah, but but I mean, he, he, here's the deal though: if you hire the minimum wage to be even across the board, these people aren't making that amount of money because they got to pay taxes 
Plus, not only do they got to pay taxes, now they got to add this new tax on top of the taxes. Which if you don't have it, I have friends that don't have it. And I'm not mentioning names. But if you don't have it, they are like telemarketers now. Okay. They are bill coll- or, um, you know, credit card company collectors. Right. They harass every two seconds. Hey, I mean, you, when it comes down to the end of the day, okay, you've got you've to have some source of income. And that some source of income is going to have to pay for your house where you live. It's going to have to pay for your food. And if you have anything left over, your entertainment. That's just the bottom line. So whether whether you are working at McDonald's or you're, oh, God, I can't believe I'm about to say this, but state senator or someone on the Capitol Hill, I, that's something else. I mean, I've talked about it before, but I need to get back into that. But anyways, either way it goes, you still got to do what you got to do, right? That's why, you know, a lot of people criticize, you know, these, they criticize uh, people that make uh, moonshine or, um, and you know what, I'm even going to like get into an area that's, that's very, very gray, if you will. Um, if you think about it, even drug dealers, as, as bad as that sounds. Now, if you're going to do, be a drug dealer, okay, that's, that's up to you, man. Have at it, you know, by all means, because they still got to eat, they still, whatever, but the thing is, is if you are a drug dealer, if you're a moonshiner, you don't sell it to kids. You just don't do that. A moonshiner, you don't sell it to someone you know that's low on money and they're addicted to alcohol. You won't do it. But even these people have to work, right? And that's their form of work. I mean, they may have a, a history where they can't get hired on at McDonald's. So they have to do something, right? They have to do something. And, I mean, you think about it, you go out and you get shot over a dime bag. That's a risk you're taking, right? You could get busted for it. So I'm not going to slam these people doing this. I myself would not do it. But I myself, if I was in that situation to where I was unable to get hired for, for any company, what other choice would I have? I wouldn't have one, right? I'm stuck doing the only thing that's available. Well, here's something you're not going to hear anywhere else. Say they had this, you know, crazy idea they were going to even the playing field with, you know, uh, you know, the same minimum wage in every state. How would you get people to agree with that? I'll tell you how. You take what's going on in Colorado and you say, hey, we're going to legalize this everywhere. If you allow us to up the minimum wage. Uh, yeah. But. In a sense, yeah, yeah, that would work. It would. Um, but kind of like after they uh, initially uh, said, okay, this is legal here. Everyone went there, right? Everyone went there. And and, and that's what's going to happen right now in Seattle. Everybody's going to go to Seattle to get these fast food joints. And guess what? When you get there, good luck on the unemployment line because you're not going to find a job. Think about, think about the apartments. Cost of the apartments going to go up because I know you make more. I know you don't make $8 anymore. You almost doubled it. So I'm going to throw another $100 a month on there. You're still going to have more money, but I need to make a little more money too. Yeah, and your electric bill is going up to $500. You're damn right. And that's exactly right. It will. Guess what? Because the people at the electric company making used to make 8 bucks, 10 bucks an hour. Now they're making 15 Well, hey, the city has to make money too, right? We have to. Not taxes just ain't enough bullshit. They're not going to make it just the hostess and the... Um, no. No, it's everything. It it's, doesn't matter when you raise anything oh yeah, no, for anything. Yeah, hospitality, but hospitality's hotel, hospitality's fast food, uh, hospitality's. But that's not the electric company. They're not part of that. But uh, the electric company. Hey, if I'm an electric company, and I see and I see everybody, you know, in these, you know, areas, 
just made more money, of course I'm going to, you know, charge more. And I, I don't care. I don't care if the rest don't make that. That ain't my problem. Nope. Like, like they say out here, you know, with certain judges out here, you know, if you say, well, hey, how am I supposed to get to work? That ain't my problem. And I'm sure there's some that say that. I mean, but the thing is, you know, it's up to you. I mean, how are you going to do it, right? This is what I was relating to, you know. I don't support it, but I can't slam them. Drug dealers. I, I do not support it. But then again, what if I was in that situation? Therefore, I mean, I, I don't feel right that I, I should slam them. But if you're out here and... and I don't even need to, I, I, I stop on that. I don't need to go into that one. Uh, I, I'll tell you, the strip joints are going to make more money. Tempo. Tempo has seriously uh, thought about that. I've talked uh, to if, if If you raise the minimum wage to 15 bucks, which they have done, them, them strip joints in Seattle are going to make a top ton of more money why because when you have people that work in you know fast food and different you know hospitality jobs they normally end up younger people yep. okay and with them being younger people they're college kids or you know just got out of you know high school or whatever and them guys are horn dogs and they're like "Ooh, tits and ass let me go let me go find it and let me you, you know check this place so the strip clubs are going to benefit Strip clubs will benefit, but this is the thing. You know, you're talking about a stripper. Um, <clears throat> there's a, and it, it was on uh, Yahoo there, and I, I, I've read about it. Uh, this is a couple days ago, and uh, some of the listeners they, they may may have read about it as well. Sorry, um, but uh, the thing is, is there was a, a girl. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, I should say young woman. I think she's 23 years old, 24 years old. Uh, she's going for uh, Spanish and her teaching um, degree. Uh, major in teaching, minor in Spanish. And uh, to be kind of like the photographer, to be a, a translator on the side as well. Um, and she is debt free. She didn't make, like, the Hope Scholarship, but her parents couldn't afford it, uh, so she took out the loan, right? She's debt-free and still has a year to go. <clears throat> a year to go in her school. She got a job, and uh, she was she was going to New York uh, for her job. She wasn't living in New York, but she was driving to New York just over the line, working in a strip joint. This lady makes one hundred eighty thousand dollars a year. Oh shit! Yeah, one hundred eighty thousand dollars. Think about that. One hundred eighty thousand dollars a year. But what really got me was the fact that she said, after she's out of school, she's going to take a three hundred to five hundred percent cut to oh. do what she went to school for. So she might be making thirty five forty a year. Instead of 180, 160. But why? Because that's her passion. Her passion isn't to strip. Her passion is what she went to school for. Teaching. To be a teacher of some sort, a translator. translator. But the thing is, could you imagine that? Could you imagine hey, if I was a stripper, okay, and I went to school to be a welder, and I could make 50000 a year, but I'm making 100000 a hundred and fifty thousand stripping. Wait, wait, wait a second. Wait a second. I, I'm, I'm actually gonna go on the defense of the strippers right now, and, and the reason I'm going to is because they have to. Think of all the d drunk dudes that go in there and everything else that they got to deal with. Oh yeah, I'm not slamming strippers. No, I'm not doing that by any no, means. No, I'm just I'm saying. I was no. What I was saying is, is I was surprised that that. So a stripper could make that much money. That is, that's a lot of money. And the fact that this individual said, "Hey, I've got a passion to do this. I don't, I don't necessarily mind doing what I am now, but I've got a passion to do something else." She goes to school for it, and she's going to take five to six hundred percent cut. 
I mean, you know, she's probably tired of the bullshit. Sometimes the bullshit outweighs the pay. Well, and it could. Yeah, it could very well be it. Yeah, I'm not slamming strippers. I mean, I'm, I'm no, I'm not saying you are. Yeah, I'm just yeah. saying. I'm, I'm thinking. I mean, I, I believe it or not, I, I'd love to open up a, a strip joint. I really would. And uh, in the state of Tennessee, you can't have like if you if you were to have a, we'll say a, a, a large building and you you literally put a wall in the middle of it, right? You can't get through there. Brick wall. You can't have uh, a bar or an establishment that serves alcohol connect to a building that is for adult entertainment stripping. They can't. They can't adjoin. They cannot touch. They can be in the same shopping center, but they cannot adjoin. They cannot touch. So, if I was able to get a large building, and I would subdivide, I would have your bar on one end. I would have a sandwich shop that serves pizza, and then I'd have the strip joint. Well, they do the bar and the strip joint in Connecticut that way. There's a uh, uh, a place. I'm not going to give free advertising, but out in New Haven, Connecticut, there is a place that has a bar, and right next door has a strip club. Yeah, okay. Yeah, well, Tennessee, you can't. I mean, you can't. But then again, I mean – we have a gentleman that uh, we throw darts with, and there's a strip joint out here that uh, he says you can get it in there. And then in order to get hard liquor, you can buy in. Beer, you have to go outside to this trailer uh, to get it. But So uh, let, me, let me get that straight. You can get in and you can get a rubbing Coke, but you, you got to go outside to a trailer to get a beer. That's what got me, yeah. That's that is crazy, but uh, and I mean, then again, I mean, it may may vary on what county you're in, also. Well, it makes a lot of sense too because you know most guys are beer drinkers. That's just a fact, and most ladies are you know alcohol or uh, you know hard liquor or wine. True. But I mean. Uh, you know, it, I guess I guess it does vary on like uh, what county. I mean, that's. That's a big thing. Um, I know some counties in Tennessee are still dry counties. You won't get any alcohol in that county. If you're caught carrying alcohol over in excessive amounts, now you're trafficking. Ah. That's true. Yep. You're trafficking. So, Tempo has to watch out. (laughs) Yeah. You don't have to watch out. (laughs) (laughs) But, no. Um... Back back to what we were talking about. We, see 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 how it goes. Fifteen dollars an hour in Seattle, and we made our way to Tennessee. Only on two local can you go that fast. <laughs> wow. Well, because we're not making fifteen dollars an hour. No, no, we're not. But uh, the thing is, is hey, I, I guess uh, you know you make it awesome. You know, um, if uh, it's not fair to everybody else. Well, no, but I mean, then again, are you are you gonna? Quit your job to go do that job? Hell no. There, yeah. You'd be surprised. There's probably lines and There people. is probably, yeah. But, you know, just like I found out when we lived out in Jacksonville, when you have all them people, jobs are harder to come by. Especially if you come down to uh, when, when, you know, when we lived out there, it was when the government shutdown was happening. Yeah. And because of that, and people didn't know what was going to happen, with with the shutdown and everything, companies weren't hiring. Now, how many employees are you know the, the M, the W, the B, are any of the you know you know fast food places or hotels or whatever? How many can they legally have? That's another thing you have to think about. As far as employees, yeah, how many can they have? And if they're paying people fifteen dollars an hour, what says hey? I'm going to have 120 employees and each have them work five hours. So you really need it's, it's not a law. So, so you're making, so you're making $15 an hour for five, five hours? Five hours a week. Yeah. I mean, there's not. There's what what not. are you going to do the rest of the time? Because you can't survive off that. No. no I guess you're going to have to find a job that's paying $7 an hour on the side. I mean, it, it just, that's why I said I'm really glad I'm not the one that has to make this decision. Um, because... I don't think it's gonna. I don't think it's gonna piss people off if it if it does passes like through the U.S. 
But I think what is going to piss people off is, like I said, the dollar menu is now the two fifty menu. Um, the gas is now eight dollars a gallon. The pack of smokes it, it goes up, right? It's going to go up. Oh no! <laughs> you know the beer is going to go up. Um, Everything's going to go up. So if you think about it, I mean, uh, and, and and I'm not saying these companies are wrong because if every other com- company is doing it and you need to do it in order to you know make your revenue to keep up. Yeah, but now what about the cost of food, the cost of living, the cost of health insurance, the cost of everything? You know, it's going to go sky high. People aren't going to be able to survive. You know, this is the thing. Um, Believe it or not, I would say a good 80 to 85% of the general economy is based off minimum wage. Okay. And the reason I say that, you know, we're sitting here talking about, well, things will go up. Um, when when a company... We're, we're going to have to play, uh, pay England prices for stuff if that happens. Yeah, you will. If it goes up, yeah, I mean, yeah, you can relate it to that. Um, it, it it's it's gonna it's you're gonna be happy. Okay, I'm gonna be happy making fifteen dollars an hour. I'm gonna be excited. Which really is nine. Which is nine. Okay, but the thing is, I'm now paying. You know, instead of two dollars for a loaf of bread, instead of two dollars for a loaf of bread. I'm paying five dollars for a loaf of bread because that bread company is paying their employees at fifteen dollars an hour, but they still have to make their hundred thousand dollar profit every week or every month. So, but, but they're just going to cut hours, so nobody's going to make. If you think about it, nobody's going to make anything. I think they'll keep okay. <clears throat> Are we talking about like a factory or are we still talking like fast food? Oh, well, uh, I mean, we'll, we'll go factory. All right, yeah, factory needs people. Right, but, okay, we'll say um, you work at, uh, hell, I don't know, Rubbermaid. Okay. Okay. And you've been working there. And, uh, I've, uh, I've worked there before, but okay. All right. So you've been working there three months. Okay. Okay. And we'll just hypothetically say you're making... Seven fifty an hour, okay. All right, making seven fifty an hour over right. at Rubber Make, right? Rubber and, made. and then after three months, you're supposed to get a quarter raise. We'll just say that, okay. So now, what are you at? Seven seventy five. Very true. Okay. Now, if it was to go to fifteen dollars an hour, I don't think goodbye overtime. That would happen. Overtime would would go away. But I don't think that they're going to say, well, we don't need you anymore. And that's also going to depend if that company, that factory is unionized or not. Um, If you, you know, with a union, a union's got its ups and it's got its downs. Just like a factory that doesn't have a union, it's got its ups and it's got its downs. So I think that, and we're still going to stay on the Rubbermaid, okay? Um, I think that if, if minimum wage was to go up, okay, so everyone at, at Rubbermaid is making 15 at least $15 an hour. Okay. I don't think they're just going to start laying people off. I think the price for these uh, trash cans and these storage bins and, and uh, everything else that is involved with Rubbermaid, uh, your price for Sharpies is going to go up. 3M is still going to make their money. Uh, and and he, here's here's the thing, because because it went up. This is hypothetically, you know, all across you know United States went up fifteen dollars or whatever, right? What makes these companies say, hey, you know what? Before we paid people based on you know. What they were, you, you know, we only got the production that we felt, you know, that we could get out of this. Now that minimum wage has increased tremendously, we expect the production to be way higher or you're gone. Uh, 
Um, and we're only going to hire people with college degrees now. Even though it's minimum wage. I don't um, I don't know. It, it may go that way. It, it may. Um, but uh, I think um, as far as factories go, I think they're pretty much pushing 80 to 90% of what they're capable of doing no matter what. I don't believe there's a factory out there that's pushing 100% all the time. So, you, so you're saying if you are making eight fifty an hour okay. and you go up to $15 an hour, you're not going to be more happier at work and work a lot harder because you're making more money. Still doing the same job. You may be doing the same job, but your whole outcome on it has been going like, okay, I'm in a shitty factory. I'm, you know, busting my tail and I'm not getting appreciative to... All right, let's go. Let's let, let's bust our tail. I'm ready to do this because I'm making more money. Because right. before you never had the, the privilege or the luxury to make that money. Right. I, I understand that. I, I do. But the thing is, is if you're making that much money, okay, and, and sure, you know what? As soon as that goes up, your first month, hell, your first year is going to be like, damn. I, I feel appreciated. I do. I mean, your morale, the employee's morale, is going to go up. With some people. A good general percentage. But as far as factories saying, okay, well, price has gone up. I need you all to work twice as hard. That's not. That's, that's what I was talking about. They're running 80 to 90% capacity right now. I mean, if you think about it, I mean, if they were only running 50, the factory's not making that revenue that they're they're able to make i mean if for instance let's say we have a we, we run like a a, a cornmeal okay but uh, before, before you continue i don't mean to cut you off you're all right but i'm good at that everyone knows that who to say that the factory let, let, let's twist this around and let's say okay well the factory is now gonna lose profit and gonna lose you know, business as far as people working, because now before they felt it was a luxury to work at the factory, now they know they can go across town and work at be a you know, uh, tire tire person and make the same amount of money. That would well at fifteen dollars an hour. We're talking base minimum wage still. Okay, that would be. <clears throat> that's what I was talking about. I'm still doing the same job. That's why that, I threw that in there. It's, yeah, that, that makes a lot of them. sense. I mean, that's your choice. You were I mean, uh, you hit the nail on the head. So with that. I mean, if minimum wage here, whether you wanted to you know flip burgers or you wanted to put taco meat in between the tacos, that's up to you. All right, you be minimum wage and, and greet people at the door. So it really that's what I'm saying. It depends how that individual feels on that job. Uh, I've had jobs where I and I. I've absolutely loved them, and there was jobs that I got paid more for jobs that I, I didn't like. So, I mean, I, I still think the best job I've ever had was when I was in high school, and I was making when I started out, gosh, four seventy five, five fifteen an hour, and I worked there for four years. Well, I, I worked for a company. You know, the company ended up going out to Canada. You know, and I got laid off and everything. But prior to that, I worked, you know, a good three years at this company, and all I did when I wasn't taking calls was play video games. See, that's a, that's a, that's a perk, right? Why yeah. would I want to go work in a factory when I could do that? Exactly, I and mean, that's your choice. I mean, that's, that's up to the individual who's applying for the job or working there. So would that also be a drain on companies? Because, uh, you know, just going on the other side of defense on this, with with companies, if I'm a business owner, you know, even for a factory. Okay, we'll say you open, like you said, tires. You said that before. Okay. Yeah, open you, a up a tire you, place. All right, yeah. Ray Ray's tires. Okay. Now, am I going to have problems where before, you know, people were willing to work whatever, but now they're not able to make, and they want to change their, you know, schedule, and if... If I don't change their schedule, they're going to go across the street and go work somewhere. So they're not going to work it. They're going to stop working at Ray Ray's 
tire, and they're going to go across the street and work at Snow Spark Plugs. And I'm just throwing some stuff out there. Yes. That's that individual's choice. That's their choice. Now, this is, and you said you own, you own this, and Snow owns that over there. Now, you said that you used to, you know, if you weren't making the call, you were, you know, your video game. Now, that was your company that says, okay, we will allow you to do this. But if Ray Ray's Tires allows you to have one smoke break an hour and Snow Spark Plugs allows you to have two smoke breaks an hour, if you're a heavy smoker and you think you can only have one or two cigarettes in that 10-minute break, and you're like, I, I can't, I, two cigarettes just ain't going to do me for an hour. Then that's your choice whether to, to run over there and try to get a job at Snow's Spark Plugs and not stay at, at you know, Ray Ray's Tire. But it's going to hurt the little business. It, it certainly is. Right, and, and it will. But the price of the good, the product, will go up. Tires will no longer, will hypothetically speak here, they're no longer 30. They're 38. Spark plugs went from 5 to 9. It'll go up. The company's still going to make their money. And it doesn't matter how many hours the person works. No. Like, like I said, you know, going back to the Seattle thing, if they do that, would, would they pass that? Who's to say people's hours won't get cut to 5, 10 hours? It, it, and it's true. It, it may. It, they very well may. But like I was saying, if I had 20 people working and I have a projected $20,000 a month, 20 people working, you make $1,000 a month. If I cut their time in half, I can get another 20 people in there, pay them the same, give them the same amount of hours. I mean, you're screwed. Exactly. I mean, you 40 hours a week, but I'm not going to work you 40 hours a week. I'm work you 20 hours a week. So, yeah. So you're getting you're getting 80 hours a month instead of making 160 hours a month. And you're making more money, you know, per hour, but in the long run, you're making less. Yeah, you, you very well can. I mean, that's all on the company. I mean, if I, if I went to go work for Ray Ray's Tires. I hope Ray Ray wouldn't, you know, say, well, $15 an hour, I've got this set amount as much as I'm going to spend as far as employees. Uh, I would hope that Ray Ray would not say, well, we're going to cut you in half and bring 10 more people in to cover that other half. So, I mean, it's, I guess it's where, like, the employee and the employer try to meet on a mutual ground. But the employer is going to cut a few hours at least. They have to. Because if you think about it, if, if, you know, the company now charges $8 an hour, okay? If they go to, if they have employees that regularly get overtime, okay? Now we're looking at, what, 9 10 11 12 13 $14 an hour or $12 an hour. You were going to $12 an hour, Tom okay. and a half. Yeah. Okay. $12 an hour. Okay. For overtime. But now if you're making $15 an hour, now you're making $23 an hour. Yeah. So I, I guess that once again, this, this comes down to the employer and the employee on a mutual ground. But, pro but profit wise, that wouldn't be smart for an employer. Unless they have a guys that are dependable that they know isn't going to fuck shit up versus guys that they have no idea. Or girls or whatever. Well, we can look at it this way, too. All right. Uh, prime example. If you... And, and this was in a, in a study that was released. Um, how these major fast food joints, even restaurants, when do you go sit down in... <laughs> The way they really, really make their money is off of your drinks and fries. Okay, drinks or fries? Drinks and fries, both. Is it getting a little smoky in here? No, I got something to my eye. But the appetizers, yeah. But this is the thing. Fries, the studies show that 
the fast food chains pay anywhere between a dollar twenty and a dollar ninety eight for five pound bag. Okay. How much is a large fry at McDonald's? I think I think two nine a dollar ninety eight. I think I've seen it like two ten. Now, what's a small Coke at McDonald's? A dollar and a dollar fifty nine. I think a dollar ninety nine for a large. Now, right, but those Cokes that they get, okay, it's in the cylinder, right? You know how much that cost? Hmm? Right. Okay, but, you, but how, right, how much does that cost? Right, right. It comes in. The, yeah, but they got they got the CO two tank. Okay, and it, it does come in the box. That and that that's a five gallon. Okay, you know what that five gallons cost them? How much? Just take a guess. Just a, just a fifty dollars. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, 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 no. Five gallons actually cost them right around fourteen bucks. Wow. Fourteen dollars. Now and, and the rest is the profit. Let's see, what is this? What, let me see if I can't get a, a, an ounce on this. I think it's like a 32. Okay, 32 ounces. Now, or how 24. many? 24. 24 will work. Okay. How many times do you think I'm going to fill this up when I'm in there? I might drink it, might fill it up, and take it with me, right? Very true. So, how much did that really cost me versus how much did it cost that company? Cost you, it cost you a lot more. It cost me like 2,000 times. If you break it down per ounce, it costs you like 2,000 times as much for your drink than they paid for the 20 ounces. We'll say I drank it and I filled it back up again. 40 ounces. It's cost me like 2,000 times as much per ounce than what they, they pay. These are based on research stories. And it is. They can and, Google it. Not necessarily the exact amount, but Maybe it's not. around that. It's it's there though. It's there, and this is how they make that money. That's it. But I mean, I mean, you could go and you can you know take a shoe company that you know people sweat in different countries for and you know spend seven dollars on you know to make the shoe, just hypothetically speaking. Right. And they turn around and sell them one hundred and sixty dollars. Exactly. Yeah. And and, and that's not going to change. And what they're going to do is when you hire them. You know, the the amount, they're just going to hire the shoe. Exactly. They'll raise the product. So exactly. uh, so, so technically, you can hire uh, you can hire minimum wage, but if the end result equals everything else is going to go up, then it's just pretty much pointless. You're gonna, exactly. That's, that's, that's the main thing. That's what I say. I mean, you can, you can bump minimum wage up to 50 bucks. Awesome. You're making $50 an hour. That's, that's amazing. That's amazing on what the cost of living is right now. Exactly, but then you go out to buy a CD and you're paying $150 for one CD. You're paying 50 bucks for a pack of smokes. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm serious. I'm not kidding. I mean... Oh, I know. It's no laughing, it's no like, laughing matter, pack but... Pack of smokes is like five bucks. And minimum wage, I think, is what? Seven fifty. Seven fifty. Minimum wage is seven fifty. Seven twenty-five. And I'm, I pay five bucks for a pack of cigarettes. So, you make fifty, you might be paying thirty eight, thirty nine dollars pack of cigarettes based off the same math, theoretically. Exactly. So, so, so you've actually done still, you've actually done nothing but screw yourself. You're still in the same hole, in, in all reality. You're still in the same hole. All right, but uh, let's I'm do, gonna let's do a uh, yeah. I, I mean, I'm sure they're like, God damn it, when's the next music? <laughs> I'm gonna play uh, Mike Mike Flows. He's the uh, guy we have tomorrow at ten ten. And that flows with a WZ. And we'll be right back, and we're going to, you know, probably do a short segment and end it because we've got another storm. <laughs> it's coming. We're going to go out here on the deck and take a look. All right. Here it, here it is. Cash rules all. <laughs> they say that cash rules all. <laughs> One time for my nigga R.I.P. baby girl Yeah, yeah. Let, it rock. Let it rock Shit 
check. I don't really wanna brag. Nah, I don't really wanna brag. I'd rather give you the next bag. Giving you jet lag. Popping the next tag. It's better to get cash. Ain't blast dance, match every beat. For them little niggas creeping in the streets. Never lagging in the heaven, nigga sleep. Lay the match in the gas, give them heat. That's me, nigga. Don't creep, nigga. Don't keep. Pray for you sleep. Pray for the week. Ain't no way to change how you live. We ain't laying in a wood box six feet deep. Time to listen, it's my passion. It's a lot of ratings, but this action. I'm straight down in my passion. You know real shit. It's my passion. Yeah, trust in the truth. I'm the best of the youth. You can check, oh yes, from the west to the youth. Making money ain't the same no more. Just stack, I don't wanna make it rain no more. Blow back, I don't wanna feel the pain no more. This crack all yeah, this the cane folks show. Know that, hold that when I get it. I'ma get it, gotta get in the tipping. Post bills, got balls, keep spitting. Get him off, cause he fucked up the vision. Get off from the top, no pretty. So all y'all niggas better listen. Like, please don't be beside yourself. If I got it, I'ma flaunt it. Never hide my wealth, hide my wealth. I got Too it, local sell, radio. I got it, shelves. But I'ma do it, I'ma do it. Only time will tell. I gotta sell, I don't take pride in shelves But I'ma do it, I'ma do it, only time will tell so, Oh yeah, don't deny I'm trying to get this money, oh I'm trying to get this money, oh I'm trying to get this money, oh Seven o'clock, don't deny I'm trying to get this money, oh I'm trying to get this money, oh I'm trying to get this money, oh Drop the shit, this shit hot I'm trying to get this money, oh I'm trying to get this money, oh I'm trying to get this money, oh Here it now, stop I'm trying to get this money, oh, I'm trying to get this money, oh, I'm trying to get this money, oh, yeah. Everything crack, never show no drugs, talk big guns, never show no slugs, jealousy is only for the homo thugs, but then the body get dropped, never show no love, trying to make room for a new nigga, but I'm looking like who nigga, damn you a new nigga, big break, yeah, I'm ready for the new figure, God see me, you ready for the new sugar, money get spent, now it's back to broke, but I stack right back, now I'm back to flow, put a player to the dirt, now it's back to coke, hit the shit, then I pass the rope, pass my coat, hit me to the throat, don't pass the coat, east side, east side, let me smash the coat, forget what I said, let me brag and boast, K -O, better grab the Please don't be beside yourself. If I got it, I'ma flaunt it. Never hide my wealth, hide my wealth. I gotta sell, I don't take pride in shelves. But I'ma do it, I'ma do it. Only time will tell. Mike Blows with the Z. I'm trying to get this money, oh, I'm trying to get this money, oh, I'm trying to get this money, oh, seven o'clock on the die. I'm trying to get this money, oh, I'm trying to get this money, oh, I'm trying to get this money, oh, drop the shit, this shit hot. I'm trying to get this money, oh, I'm trying to get this money, oh, I'm trying to get this money, oh, here now, stop. I'm trying to get this money, oh, I'm trying to get this money, oh, I'm trying to get this money, oh, yeah. All right, we're back, but uh, we're, we're cutting it short. Um, we've got another storm. Go figure, right? Here in the Valley of Tennessee, storms. Oh, wonderful storms. Uh, but I'm going to come back later, and I'm going to do a little music show. That sounds good. You know, a little indie music show. I got a lot of music, a lot of different uh, tunes from a lot of different artists, and I'm going to try to play it. Uh, hours worth, try to get like 100 songs done in an hour. <laughs> Wow, that'll be that'll be something. Um, but uh, hey, uh, I tell you what, this is Tempo, and I'm gonna I'm gonna sign out uh, once again, as I always do. I want to thank the men and women that are serving, that have served, the ones that are thinking of serving, and most importantly, the ones that did not make it back. All right, and this is uh, Ray Ray. This is Snow. And. Chrissy D has left the building. She's left the studio. But, uh, yeah, hey, guys, uh, thanks a lot for listening. It's been fun. Uh, tempo's been out for a little bit, but uh, I'm back in full force. You can't take me down. Exactly. All right, well, join us tomorrow if you miss our music show. Uh, I can't say exactly when, probably about, like, 12 o'clock in the morning. Um. But uh, tomorrow, 10, 10 p.m., Mike flows. And if you didn't hear the interview from yesterday, check out the Juke Joint Drifters over on Facebook. And I have that interview posted over there. All right. Well, everybody have a good night. God bless. And uh, try to stay dry. Yeah, it's, it's, it's starting to come down outside the studio pretty hard right now. All right. Have a good evening.